Hi guys, and welcome to today's show. Um, you will see myself and B-Rad sitting there. There is no Mike Pierce today. Unfortunately, he has the man flu and uh, isn't able to, to make today's show. So get well soon, Mike, if you're still up and watching. Um, our special guest for today um, is also not going to come on purely because Mike has uh, a relationship with this guy, he knows exactly what he does, and he was going to be extracting as much of the good stuff from a special guest as he possibly Yeah, it's going to be really badass when he comes, too. I've got some of the stuff that they're going to cover. So. so we have decided that we are going to do a Q&A um, today. Um, so make sure that you guys put in your questions into the live chat and do a bit of a question and answer session. Um, and it also gives uh, me the opportunity to, to grill Brad and some of the stuff that uh, he's done over the years as well. Um, you know, part of the famous Mike and Brad team um, or the NFG or, or, you know, any of the other names that you go off of, you're well known, but I know Mike's the vocal guy. And mm -hmm. <laughs> And you're the guy. I'm more of the, the silent and deadly type. The si yeah, the silent and deadly guy. So we need to obviously um, extract as much as we can from Brad on this show, guys. So if you've got any questions, these guys do lead gen. What, what else do you guys do, Brad? What have you done over the last, you know, X amount of years to make money? I know you do. You're, you're big on lead gen and, and stuff like that. Just now, yeah, but I'm, like I'm huge on lead gen now. Uh, but before... Um, you know, I, I came from like the, the OMG era, uh, OMG machines type stuff. And I know a lot of, uh, a lot of people that I converse with and that I still, uh, know today have come from that kind of network. Um, so they were big at pushing day job killer, um, client work, you know? So that's initially where, where I started. Um, I finally, um, you know, I pushed for years. I started in e -com because it was easier. I worked for the company I had in, and I became in, in the midst of the recession, we needed more sales there. So I said, why don't I learn this online stuff? And is it, instead of paying me a bonus, just make me a, a vendor. So that's what we did. So I started with uh, e-com and uh, uh, get tired of that because um, when you're making money, you're building up cash flow. Then you've got to all you've got to dump it all back into reinvesting in the stock, um, which um, a lot of people kill it with ecom. But it, I mean, it, keeping up with like uh, supply chain and all that stuff is a whole different job. Um, so then, you know, after I joined OMG, they were they were really big on you know what they call it day job killer type stuff. That was like their shtick, um, mm -hmm. day job killer uh, client work. So I was like, okay, I can do client. So. I put up, um, you know, Greensboro SEO, rank that like number one through, you know, um, four or five back in the day. And uh, Terry Power, um, I didn't know him at the time, didn't know he was in some of the same circles I am now. Uh, but I remember seeing his face because it was back when uh, you could you could do that in Google. So I had my face up there. He had his face up there. And then it's funny because he was at Rockstars last year, um, kind of came around, but I, I got that up, got a few clients, and then ultimately um, started getting on the webinar, started networking, and clients started coming to me, or someone wanted to work, or people wanted to work on client work with me, so I started that, ended up getting a um, 7,500 a month client, you know, for rep management, a bunch of stuff, uh, so I was like, well, it's time to uh, to give up the day job, so I, I ended up um, leaving there, um, sold. I actually, I was doing anything to make money at that point because I was, I was taking care of the client. I was selling domains, you know, expired domains, all that stuff, setting up networks for people, all that. And I was making, you know, through just that, um, I was probably making like 10 grand a month, you know, uh, for quite a while, uh, just finding them on my own with a trips, um, all that stuff, uh, all the expired domains. So it went that route for a long time. Then I went, ended up at, uh, Jimmy Kelly's um, event a few years ago, and that's where I met Mike. Um, he had a Legion opportunity, which was, I think, rehab at the time. Mm -hmm. So I started to get into um, that niche. Um, and the more you dig into that, the more you find, uh, I mean, the easier it is. Um, you've got to know that niche. Once you know that niche, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, by the way, while I'm rambling, 
post questions down there. Um, a lot of times we we don't get to them because we've just got so much going on. Today I want to get to all of them. So uh, post them up. We'll, we'll queue them up and then you know knock them out. Um, but uh, you know after I started getting into that, started getting into lead gen, um, then mass page was huge at the moment. So um, I was driving all my lead gen through um, through mass page stuff. I would use uh, lead gadget. I would use Serp Shaker. Um, I would use a few that you know we created ourselves. Some black hat groups had some, um, and then I was just cloaking everything over. So then they started targeting that a little bit more. Um, so I kind of scaled back on that. Uh, got really into GMBs, and ultimately, uh, the best way, in my opinion, um, to do that it, or to do lead gen is GMBs. Even though everyone whines when they lose them, um, I mean. It, it, as long as you meet that payback period and you keep churning them out, then it doesn't really matter. You know, you're kind of stacking it and it's going to go up and down, but uh, eventually, you know, over time it should, this camera, I can't ever, over time it should go, you know, that way. Um, so that's, that's my primary focus. You know, I've got some client stuff I work on, but you know, the goal is um, I feel good with just the lead gen stuff. If I can bring in a, you know, a 2k day, um, from calls and stuff. So usually Mondays are good and then it kind of trails off a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and so I'll get, I, I've got a list, Alex, I'll get to those. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so my primary focus is setting up uh, revenue streams, automated, somewhat automated revenue streams, um, because I could leave, you know, for a week or two and, uh, anything other than a catastrophe within GMB, or within my sites, um, then I've still got cash flow coming in. So yeah. just building those. That's what everyone should be doing, building cash flow and then you know taking anything else that you know comes along that seems um, not I don't want to say easy, but you know, it, it's not gonna be a time suck because I've gotten stuck in a lot of time sucks, and that's uh that's something I would say try and avoid for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, diversifying your income streams is exactly so important um and something that you know i would also second what what you're saying there to sort that out paul hogden any subject ask any questions you want obviously um between us we we have a wealth of experience that i'm pretty sure we can ask most questions uh, answer most questions mm -hmm. so anything you want paul it can be anything related to obviously what brad's just explained in terms of yeah, his seo cash flow generation uh what markets you know to go into stuff like that you know so anything like that uh whether you're you're brand new or i mean you've been doing it a while because it took me a, a a long time to you know they say uh crawl walk run you know i was in that walk stage for too long in my opinion so anything to help you get um out of any of those it's yeah that's important do you have any so we'll just go with some of the basic questions that are there just now do you have any vendors that you can suggest for infographics and or logo design um so they're looking for infographics to modify yeah. the logo for various gmbs so i'm pretty sure given what you do you must have someone there yeah i mean fat joe is a little bit more expensive i know they were mentioned on the last uh the last broadcast uh but I mean, they're a pretty cream of the crop. Otherwise, um, I just test people out with Fiverr. Um, logo design from Fiverr, uh, what I've noticed lately is um, it's not as good as it used to be for whatever reason, um, but they can still do pretty well. Find, um, uh, I've got a, um, an Indian uh, company that I outsource to for uh, web design, so they could do any logo design that I need them to as well. So if you have someone in your back pocket, you know, like that, um, otherwise, I would probably start with Fiverr if you're looking for low cost options. Otherwise, if you want a full campaign, I would go with Fat Joe. Yeah, Fat Joe do good work. Um, yeah, they do. And it's stuff that you can actually show your clients. Um, so if you have that type of client that you need, uh, that type of campaign uh, where you can actually show them the work that you've done um, and it's, you can't be all cloak and daggers, uh, then Fat Joe and, you know, Gary's. Um, get me links his uh um guest post followed by the tiered linking works really well too so yeah have a look at that but hopefully that gives you a bit of ammunition there glenn art 
Inder Deep, your YouTube subscribers have increased so rapidly. Any tips? Believe it or not, like people talk about the YouTube thing and say, oh, it's amazing. You've got this, you've got that, you've got that. It's been a bloody hard slog. There's no quick way to get YouTube subscribers. Sure, I could go and buy some. That doesn't offer any value. It doesn't bring any more people here. So I've always tried to remain, you know, doing it um, organically um, and getting smart guys like Brad on, you know, interviewing all the different people that have been on, you know, through the podcast, as well as delivering over the shoulder training videos is going to work. You know, that's what people want to see. And I think you've just got to be consistent with it. I, you know, I'm sitting here going, bloody hell, I'm kind of stuck at the 45,000 mark. It's not him uh, scaling up as fast as I would want it to. But I think the, the, the fastest thing that got me the growth in the YouTube channel was me giving away a free SEO course, um, which over 40,000 signed up within the first week. Um, and I think giving that giveaway obviously helped accelerate the growth. And now it's just, you know, you get, you know, X amount of following month on month. We've got that, then you can build the list, email them out and get subscribers that way. So it all yeah. builds on top of each other. Um, so there's no quick weird, because a lot of people are now starting to ask me that, like, ah, oh, you got it so quick. You know, it's not actually that quick. It was... You were a badass before too. You had a name before. Um, yeah, so it does provide somewhat of a head start. But yeah, but it has like even my own personal branding. You'll be the same as this, Brad. Like you're speaking at events here, there, and everywhere. Obviously, you're speaking at SEO Rock Stars next mm -hmm. month. You 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 had your own event, NFG Rock Stars last year, and God knows what else. You know, you you guys have been at. So it's something that's done over a a period of years, building your brand and your reputation and. Uh, there is no quick hooky fix, unfortunately, not on this. Um, it's just, you know, we sit here week on week, churning out, you know, advice. Yeah, how many shows a week do you do, uh, typically? I'm doing, I'm doing two live shows a week. So I do oh. this one, and I do the one with Chris Palmer on a Wednesday. Yeah. I also release probably two-hour-long podcasts a week, which, mm -hmm. again, are, they're pre-recorded. It's just easier yeah. to do it that way. And I have a couple of other videos that go out. So you're probably talking about a good five or six videos per week. Yeah. So that's how you, that's essentially how you, you would build your subscribers from, you know, a dead start. It's start producing. Yeah. For anyone that's uh, um, interested in that, I would suggest like, uh, like the traffic secrets book by uh, Russell Brunson, the click funnels guy. Um, it, it's basically every single platform is the same. Um, get a schedule and just pump it out consistently. And you're being extremely consistent. So that I would say that would be the number one thing is, you know, consistently providing value and putting it out there. And that's, that's what the YouTube algorithm loves. I don't know about uh, IG or anything like that, but I know that's Similar. what. To be yeah. fair, the engagement that the, mm -hmm. the videos or the, you know, whatever you're putting out there gets um, is obviously going to propel it into to that. But obviously you've got other little things like you can do youtube ads and stuff like that you know you can make sure that i could make sure that this video appears on everything that a uh, you know chase rayner for example um mm -hmm. puts out we can advertise on his channel or anyone else's channel that that might be of a similar or relevant audience so you can obviously scale up a little bit but what you do get is not that many people subscribe <laughs> you know you get loads of lurkers there's loads yeah. of guys that just sit and watch. They don't even speak in the comments. They don't say nothing. They, you know, just don't do anything. So which is what I do when I'm on YouTube too. I don't. Yeah. I hardly subscribe to anyone. I don't ever like anything. I just watch it. So I mean, I'm helping out the algorithm that way by watching your stuff. But um, but yeah. So I think in terms of subscribers, it's one of those figures that you know you get a hell of a lot more viewers than you will get subscribers. I've got over a million views now. Um, across all of the kind of videos and stuff that I've put out in the last six months, you know, that's pretty good, but only 45,000 of them subscribed. So, you know, that's the kind of ratio you're looking at. But <clears throat> yeah, just as, as Brad says, consistency, pump that stuff out um, and you will get there in the end. But you were talking about books there. Um, so I'm going to put you in the spot. Alex is asking, what are your Yeah, I mean, um... I'm I'm getting through um, a, a tried and true uh, Tony Robbins. It's it's one that I've always wanted to read. I thought he was kind of you know guru cliche, 
um, type thing. I even knew a guy that went um, to one of his uh, his seminars. Completely changed when he he came back. It was insane. Um, but the dude's a good writer. I can bust through it. Um, hang on, I'll actually grab some. Here's my most recent one. Let's see what the man has got. Um... You can see the plophis in the background. You see the uh, uh, yes. the toy dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I'm really into like behavioral economics because I feel like it it ties everything that we do together to a certain extent. Um, so predictably irrational. That one's good. Um, I, I went most of the way through that one. I think the outsiders is extremely good. I think I've mentioned that one on here before. Um, yeah. This is all about um, they study like the top SEOs ever, like people that have outperformed Jack Welsh uh, of GE, stuff like that. And it, it all comes down to capital allocation, which I think a lot of us have issues with. It's like we're, we're getting this cash flow coming in from, you know, all of our all of our ventures. Right. You know, you've got affiliate sites. Is, is affiliate your primary source? of yeah. Income? Yeah. yeah. So you've got all these affiliate sites and once, you know. Like, where do you where do you deploy that capital? Can you go? Would you prefer to go buy a site that's already done, that's getting cash flow? Would you prefer to sink a bunch of money into maybe an expired domain or an auction domain and then put a bunch of money into content and build it up that way? It's like capital allocation um, is what separates the top CEOs um, in history from the pack. So um, one that I just finished, it's a really quick read that I got from uh, Stephen Kang got the idea from Stephen King is the formula. That one's really good. It's easy to bust through. And then um, I had lost my copy of uh, 48 Laws of Power. Um, so I, I re repurchased that. And then we got this one. I'm getting through this kind of slower, but Thinking Fast and Slow, that's a dense, dense book. And, um, Nobel Prize uh, winner in economics uh, wrote that, but that's... Uh, that's what I've been reading. Uh, favorite book of all time, though, is uh, Still 50th Law by Robert Greene. Uh, anyone that has a chance to read that and is a huge 50 Cent fan like I used to be or still am, um, I would definitely recommend that. So uh, if you haven't gotten that, I, I probably would recommend everyone grab 50th Law. Absolute favorite book of all time. I've read it two or three times, I think. So Interesting, interesting um, books there. Sure. I think obviously studying, you know, just getting your brain going is, is always a good time. Looking yeah. at these people's ideas and stuff. I mean, I'm not a big reader. I would much prefer to listen to an audio book yeah. than sit and read. But there's, there's obviously anyone out there who says, oh, I can't be asked reading or, or whatever. You know, I think, you know, even if you read an hour a night or something like that, you mm -hmm. can pass through these books quite quickly uh, or listen to them quite quickly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, my problem with uh, the audiobooks, I like those in the car for long trips because I can focus on them then. Um, any other time, if I try and listen to an audiobook, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I just spaced out for like 30 minutes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I snap back and I'm like, oh, I got to rewind all of that. But yeah, um, I, I do like the audiobooks. I've got a uh, YouTube premium uh, subscription. So I just download audiobooks off of YouTube and listen to those in the car and stuff. Like, uh, there's one, it was about Warren Buffett's managerial style and stuff like that. So <laughs> crazy. I'm all over the place with that, that type of stuff. But also, um, oh shit, what's his name? The Weber guy. Do you remember his name? Ryan something. Yeah, his, uh, I still need to, I've downloaded his um, book. It was on, I think, um, what's that? It's uh, the Amazon where you get like, unlimited like the free books or whatever it was on that uh i think it was kindle unlimited or something like that uh that was on there so if, for anyone running an agency you might as well just grab that off of uh amazon as well um so he's all into processes which i like and streamlining stuff and his uh his um spreadsheets can make me go cross-eyed but you know i like to keep it a little bit more simple than that but you know once you got it down i would assume it would be okay yeah, he's done well in his career, so I think he's a beast. So yeah. not, not bad, a bad thing to be following. So, yeah, check that stuff out. But on to some other good stuff. So Ashton Lobo's asking, for, for, a, for an Amazon affiliate website, 
for an expired domain, wait a minute, hey, for an Amazon affiliate site for an expired domain, after you complete the content part of the website, how do you go ahead with ranking and the links process? So what what's your kind of ballpark process? Is it just slapping the content on and then ramming a few links at it, or is there something different you're doing? Yeah, again, there, you, I mean, uh, you're probably the same way, but consistency is key. You know, consistency and having a formula uh, for on page. So if you go back um, and watch the ones that we've done in the past, I know Mike has been hammering home uh, content really, really hard. So you go through and eat, all your content writers should be trained in cognitive and uh, more than likely uh, pop page optimizer pro. Um, those are two of my favorite um, programs that I use. So um, once you get them trained there, then you come up with a content schedule. Um, and you have them consistently post it every every month. And um, I like what I like to do is have um, them post in a sheet that I then give access to my link builders. So in the sheet, uh, in the Google sheet, it has you know the um, the title and then the URL. So then the content writer or the the content writer can post the title and URL in there. Um, the link builders know what type of links to build to those content pieces. And then it can roll um, without me uh, hopefully spending a ton of effort on it. So, <laughs> Yeah, make that shit as easy as possible. Yeah. Would you ever, though, at the, you know, obviously, say you bought a, an Amazon affiliate website. Yeah. You know that the content, you, you know, is really severely lacking in content. Yeah. Do you start building links, like, just to the homepage, just to build up domain authority while the content is being, you know, made and stuff like that yeah what that? i would first do is make sure that it has a full entity um you've got a content distribution system where it's set up through ifttt so every time you put out a new um a new post um then it's going to go out to your network um i like to go from my post or from my website to twitter and then out to everything else because it cuts down on duplicate content and it kind of gives you a, a quick stack if you will um, so I set that up. I, I, I have a guy that I just go to and, you know, he interconnects everything, ties it all together. Um, I would do that. I would get the entity right on the site. So I would do, you know, all the schema stuff, go through, um, Clint's, uh, course, if you don't know how to put schema together, um, go through that, um, get all of that structural stuff, right. Make sure there's, you know, structurally, if you bought the site, Hopefully you bought, you know, a healthy site, make sure there's nothing like that that you need to clean up though. Um, and then, yeah, you can, you can start some light linking uh, to it as you go through the, uh, the content. So when I'm, when I'm, I, I don't buy a ton of affiliate sites, but if I have a, a larger client um, that I just brought on, like we did it a ton of times in rehab, we we're actually white labeling for a, uh, a marketing company that strictly targeted rehab facilities. So we, we got to do this a bunch of times and know it works. So what we do is um, we'll run a crawl um, with uh, um, Screaming Frog, um, get all of the, the titles and URLs in there, put those in a sheet and tell our content writer, go through each one of these with COG, don't worry about pop, uh, but go through each one of these with COG and then um, highlight them as you finish them. So as they finish them, I'll throw them into Webmaster Tools to get them recrawled, maybe do some internal linking if I think I need to, and that typically pushes it up pretty quick. So I would I would probably have them do the ones that I really want to focus on first. Um, you know, say it's like five to ten that they should be able to pump out in like a day or two, um, and then run all those through uh, uh, Search Console and um, hopefully be for much further ahead than when you bought the site. And then you can come behind it with linking. You should be linking to your entity properties with uh, just niche edits, uh, stuff like that, just general brand name, uh, just to power it up. And then if you've got that distribution network set up, then that's going to help you from there. Good tips, good tips. Um, so make sure you do take action on them, guys. Um, Dan Jones, so Brad, like me, you probably made a shit ton of mistakes along the way. Um, what is the fastest way you could advise someone to create passive income with SEO, knowing what you know now? I assume, Dan, that you would have um, some capital to put up if you want to create something completely passive and want it to be quick. The more capital you have, the easier it is, obviously, and that's true with anything. 
Um, I would probably find someone that could build me out a network of um, PPL, uh, like a PPL network. So uh, choose a niche that you know or that you want to get to know, um, and then go out and buy, you know, a network. Make sure it includes the sites, the GMBs, all of that stuff. I know um, when I was working with uh, with Jordan. Um, I think a year or two ago, he was selling networks that he just, you know, he wanted the, the chunk of cash that so he was selling them for, you know, 1200, 1500, stuff like that. And the, um, what was it? Exterminator niche, you know, bug removal, stuff like that. Um, he would just sell them. So I would go out and find someone that is selling those type of networks or, uh, connect with someone, uh, that, that, you know, is doing that kind of service and give them money to maybe build a network out, uh, together. So I've teamed up with people like that in the past. They have a, a pretty good offer um, and they want to put up all of the capital and then I can employ you know, my team and get everything going or my processes that makes it a lot easier. And then it's uh, you like Kiyosaki, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Robert Kiyosaki calls that uh, infinite return when you've got no money in it and it provides a, a return forever. Um, so that's, a position I would be in if I'm doing some of the work and then putting it up. But yeah, I would go out and find um, something that already has cash flow and purchase it if you can. And look yeah. for ways that you can improve on that or add to it after you purchase it. But yeah, um, that's the quickest way. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, now, the next one, ODYS Global is a beauty. Yep. So, uh, guys, Make sure you do check out odys.global if you are looking for um, you know, age domains, done for you affiliate websites, or you want to get into creating that passive income. They've got some great stuff in the market. Yeah, it's going to give you a huge head start. Yeah. If you're to do that. At the end of the day, it's getting that head start. Who the hell wants to be doing all that grunt work at the start and all that stuff that Brad's talking about, you know, setting up IFTTT and doing all this and getting your citations and, you know, I would rather just give someone 10 grand or whatever the price was to have something that was ready made, ready for me to just, you know, go in and, and scale up. And yeah, you know how many shitty little projects I've started over my career and just never finished it because I got, you know, either distracted, burnt out, stuff like that. If you buy something that's already generating cash flow, then you can have a payback period in mind um, and hopefully improve upon it from there. Um, but yeah, it, it's it'll save you a ton of time and money in the long run. Well, here's a story. Actually, I put up a a post in Facebook. Um, I think it was a few days ago or over the weekend, where a lady um, was desperate to get out of an agency. She told me a budget and said, "What is the best way for me to make income and get away from agency life?" And it was exactly you know she had a budget. She paid. I'm not going to say figures, but it was low. It wasn't you know outrageous amounts of money. But it was a guy like yourself, Brad, who start, started the project, got content on there, built a few links, and then, you know, got distracted or got involved yeah. in something else. So the, the website was getting traffic. It just wasn't monetized. And sometimes you can get, take advantage of guys like Brad who, you know, have been distracted or, or, or lazy affiliates even, you know, guys who just, you know, they do it and then just can't be bothered anymore. There's some great opportunities there. So that lady, you know, within nine months is gone from the agency and mm -hmm. has double what she was earning. And she, you know, that's it. And, and you know, she did, as I say, I'm not going to say figures. She She's probably spent less than 6,000 bucks on the whole thing, including buying the domain and everything, um, including training with me and everything else. So um, it can be done. Just, you know, there, there are opportunities out there. And again, ODYS and stuff like that are a marketplace where there maybe is some great age domains as well, great backlink profiles. So take advantage. Um, so Clark Duncan might need to sponsor the channel for my design company, Be All Design. Um, so I'm assuming Clark has some design stuff there for whoever was looking at logos. Go and have a, a some free advertising for Clark right now. Yeah. Free advertising for Clark. So go over and check what Clark does um, and <coughs> see if that's an option for you. So there you go. Uh, Digital Ear, Clint, Freebie Seeker Suck. <laughs> right. Um, 
Stephen Stewart, great right up in the Scotsman. Cheers, pal. Um, Nick Coburn, Peter Van de Graaff interview was great. He is a great guy, got great stories. Um, check him out, yeah. <laughs> Nick's a badass too, by the way. I I, I know he, he's not in the public eye, and I don't think he wants to be, especially with that dumbass Santa hat. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that dude, I've, I've worked personally with Nick. He's a, a bad mofo when it comes to online cash generation. We need to talk more, Nick. We need to talk more and see what you're up to. Maybe yeah, he's over there. He's over in the UK somewhere too. So. Um, yeah, I've not come across Nick in person actually. So there's mm -hmm. a lot. Of guys in the UK that are all of a sudden popping up and I'm like bloody hell have I not heard of these guys but yeah. play for staying off radar as well um LinkedIn user hi guys hello whoever you are and um, Gary Patterson if you have a service area GMB can you choose any address to use as your NEP uh, I typically have an address tied to it so um that's the address I use be consistent with that any yeah. have it all muddled up in multiple addresses and whatever else um clint is that is clint yeah that's uh that's um ryan, ryan yeah. i've heard it's yeah. solid but i i have yet to buy his 3k worth of automation stuff so but yeah. i don't really run an agency like that either so it's it's not worth it to me but it would be worth it to anyone wanting to run one of those big ass you know professional looking agencies i'm just i walk in with my monopoly shirt i'm not, not too professional looking so. and <laughs> uh, not nah, listen each to their own but uh yeah i'm pretty sure ryan's got some solid stuff there he is a top dog at what he does and um, hello randy rode alex so that's a question for you brad how do you plan your daily tasks is it sas or what are you using Please don't say it. Don't open up a pen in a notepad, please. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to show all my. You know, but we'll get a quick. You know, like yeah, you can see it's got stuff written on it. But yeah, that's it. Dude. I do that uh, plus calendar. I put it if it's really important and I need to remind myself to do it like in the future, then um, I'll have it pop up on my phone for my calendar. But yeah. I'm, I'm also um, kind of old school in that way, and I don't know why, but I've just got Google Calendar, and I, and I yeah. post it notes and shit, and people think I'm crazy, but I just can't be arsed with Trello and stuff. It's just too much faffing around. Well, I, um, I was listening to a Simon Sinek thing one time, and he was talking about uh, like uh, to get yourself to do stuff, um, trick your brain, and, and get a dopamine drip. And the way he does it is he, he writes all his tasks down, um, even if he can remember them, he'll write them all down and then he'll either check them off or mark, you know, put a line through them, whatever. Every time you check off one of your tasks for the day, that's a dopamine drip and it's a uh, positive reinforcement for you to do it. He said he would even go back and even if he's already completed it, he'll write it down and check it off just to get that dopamine drip. And so <laughs> just writing it down and doing it will encourage you to do it in the future as well. So. There's also apps for shit like that, by the way. Yeah. Um, Wonderlist was one I used. I think they've done away with it. But also yeah. another great book um, that, that I've read is Getting Things Done um, by a guy called Dave Allen. Um, and his whole thing is about um, decluttering your brain. You know, if you've got 10 ideas, you can't do it. So note stuff down or use you know apps or, or whatever cool way to free up your brain because you cannot perform to the best of your ability while your brain is rammed full of, you know, I've got to go shop and I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Yep. And you know, someone's breathing down your neck, can't, can't perform. Yeah. Right. You've only got so much processing power, you know, our brain is a computer, like a super computer, but it's still just a computer. And yeah, it wants you overloaded. The one thing is good too. I think mostly everyone in our industry has read that one. Uh, but that's all about just, you know, you can't multitask, just shut up, sit down, get your stuff done, you know, one at a time and mark it off. So, yeah. I definitely can't multitask. I've had people no, talking all. to me and I'm trying to hold a conversation. I'm typing and what the person's, what I'm supposed to be typing, yeah. I end up typing what the other guy's saying to yeah. me. It all ends up. Fun. You know what's funny on, on calls with Mike, I'll make fun of him since he's not here. We call him hooked on phonics because when he's typing shit out and he, he's talking to you, he's like the dog ran to the cat. And he, he like, I'm like, dude, I know exactly what you're fucking 
typing to this person on Skype or whatever because you're saying it to me. He's like, oh, I am? Yes, you are. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's probably a bit like me. It's it's too hard, too hard. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Stewart's asking when doing links for an affiliate site. If I'm using SEO Builder to get started, for instance, but don't want to use the home address, what would you recommend? Um, so you mean for citations from SEO Builder? Um, yeah. Then use a mailing address or, or yeah, I would try and get a different address. I I used to tie. I don't know how many businesses uh, to my old address at the condo. They probably still get mail um, because when I was first starting out, it was just in a two bedroom condo. But like uh, this one guy for a website called me one time because I had my web design company tied to that address just so I could get the GMB. And um, he's like, uh, it, it looks like you guys are based in a condo complex. I was like, yeah, it's my house. I was like, we'll meet at Starbucks. He's like, oh, OK, so we met at Starbucks. But yeah, he, he had. And my wife would freak out. She's like, well, uh, people can see our home address. I was like, they can probably look it up anyway. You yeah. know, I was like, and we, I mean, we're in a condo. So it's like, it's, you've got to have the key to get in the front door. Then you've got to have the key to get into the, you know, um, they're going to have to be waiting for me in the parking lot or something to, to, to come find me. But yeah, uh, it, it was funny because I, I would use my home address all the time. But now, you know, just, just uh, grab a GMB off of someone or, you know. Something like that. There's, there's, there's actually guys on Gumtree and shit like that as well that will let you mm. use the address, uh, address for you know thirty yep. bucks and shit like that. So there's, there's plenty of opportunities, Stephen. Um, so use them if you are, you are, you know, for whatever reason not want to use your home address, which I personally um, done. At the, you know, when I first started working as a freelancer, I didn't want mm. my address on the website. Um, I'm not as brave as Brad. Um, I was just like, no one's having my home phone number home address so i got some yeah. shit mailing address paid 50 bucks for it once i get the gmb i canceled it and, i remember uh, back in the day you could um you could send a postcard to a ups store and then you would i would never go to the ups store but you call them you're like did i get any mail no not today so then you call back the next day did i get any mail yeah you've got something that's i was like is it a google postcard yeah i was like oh sweet can you give me that number on there and they give me the number and then the next day i call back and I'd cancel, you know, so I would not have to pay the monthly fee for the UPS uh, address. But yeah, I used to do that. I don't, it doesn't work anymore. But yeah, there used to be a way to get them. So yeah. that's what I started doing. Anyway, by hook or by crook, even use a relative that doesn't care about their address. Whatever, yeah. just get that num a pin number. Jordan Pierce, yeah, I sold seven networks for paste and auto glass. Um, so yeah, guys like Jordan. Um, you know, or selling networks and stuff like that. So um, there probably is a whole bunch of others out there that are selling stuff. If you want paper lead websites, take advantage. Or yeah, I wouldn't even say paper lead website. I would say paper lead network because you're going to need more than yeah. one if you want to generate some cash flow. Yeah. So see when you say <coughs> paper lead network, I'm assuming some of these um, GMBs and stuff just don't even have websites or nothing. It's just yeah a lot of times you don't need them yeah you can use the business site uh on most of them so i do like having my own uh at least lander in those because you can optimize the content and it helps push um and then you've got an additional uh place to send links to but yeah you can get by plenty of people get by with just the uh the business site interesting interesting um i love like gmb and doing all that stuff in the uk like you, you guys in america or i've only ever seen it from talking to you guys mm -hmm. uh, just going so aggressively with the, the gmb stuff it's class i love it um so yeah gary you can talk to jordan hook up with him give him a shout on facebook or whatever and um, good solid guy um who is also getting back into lead gen asset flipping so yeah knows his shit for sure um Randy, was that Lisa? Yes, that was Lisa I was referring to that got that uh, domain name off of a... It wasn't a lazy affiliate, just a guy, like Brad said, that just had opened up... Got overwhelmed, people. yeah. Um, and just had stuff sitting around that he actually forgot he had the website. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, we we used to reach out to a bunch of people in the, uh, the substance abuse niche. Um, we're always looking for assets to... To purchase there so um yeah it could be the next rehabs.com you know 
people have got assets sitting there that they don't know what to do with. Uh, we actually helped a client purchase one for 150 grand. Um, and he was making 15 K a month from the website and they, they were able to snag it for 150 grand, which the math doesn't make sense to me why you would sell it for 150 grand, but the guy did. Um, so it was a good deal. That's the, that's the thing though. Cause some people just need that money for whatever yep. reason, you know, cash to sink into something else, but obviously they can have golden rate is 30 to 35 times the, the monthly rave and exactly I mean, what what that you know for that 15 grand to get it for 150 that's only 10 times a rave but there are opportunities out there where people just say oh fuck this like i sold when amazon cut their commissions i sold my websites for way less than they were worth just i was just like fuck it i'm yeah. give me my cash um i'm out and uh yeah so th there are guys that, that just don't care just they'll, they'll take 10 or whatever um, so there are good opportunities. You've just got to dig deep. Before. Yeah. A good friend of mine just listed his, uh, his site. I won't give away the niche, but half a mil. Uh, yeah. So, but I think he's trying to pull in like 30 X. So I think he's making like 20 grand a month or so, uh, maybe a little more. Um, and yeah, he, uh, he's just wanting to flip it. And then I don't know what the fuck he's going to do with it. Uh, the, I, I asked him that I was like, what are you going to do with this money? He's like, I'll figure it out when I get it. So, yeah, half <laughs> a mil to have though. If you had half a mil, you're sitting there like, fuck, what's next? Yeah, do, uh, just go into, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to like talk to someone that sold the site and been successful with the money after. Um, so anyone in the audience or whatever, if you are, we'd love to have you on. But yeah, you know, what do you do with half a million? You know, wh where are you going to stick that? Are you going to stick it in somewhere that's not like not in the online realm like real estate or whatever you're going to go out and buy you know a portion of a, an apartment building or like you're just going to buy at&t stock with it you know it's like what do you what do you do with half a mil you know in fact i've got a guy i've not spoke to him yet and i'm not sure of his figures but odys we're talking like mm -hmm. this guy's a great guy to go on your podcast he, you know he's he built up websites flipped them for a lot of money sweet uh, and i believe he has invested in more digital but uh, I, I might try and get him on here because it would be good to see if you've got 500k do you put 200k back into digital or you know whatever so yeah it'd be quite cool to get someone like that on so yeah. um yeah we will try and get someone on so we can figure that shit out um paul hogden is saying to make yourself do stuff do it first thing in the morning and or yep. count down from five to one then do it fucking hell some people have got some crazy stuff Bullet Journal is awesome for that. What was the bullet? What the hell is Bullet Journal? I have no. Oh, probably the task list and stuff. Right? Ah, cool. Um, cool, cool. I use Daylight for Mac, so there's another suggestion. Um, <laughs> Jordan saying, "Don't ask me to do multitasking." I can barely do one task sometimes, but yeah. Um, Theo, good to see you there. Um, guys, keep your questions coming. Um, <laughs> guys, I don't know. You got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find one that you don't hate. Um, but, uh, th the biggest part is um, learn not to hate them. Um, if you can, if you can start like like consciously, like I'm gonna like this person. You know, um, no matter what they do, I'm gonna like them. Then you can trick yourself into not not trick yourself. I'll say rewire yourself into liking said person because I don't like a lot of people. Right. So if I'm going to be around someone, I've, I've got to be like, okay, I'm going to look for the positive, you know, stuff, try and put yourself in their shoes. Where are they coming from when they're saying this? They just, is it because they don't understand? Did I not describe something clearly enough? You know, what is it uh, that I haven't done um, that makes them a pain in the ass? Some people are just pains in the asses too, you know, but um, references are typically the best way to, to, to pull in clients that uh, you can get along with typically um, team up with someone that is putting themselves out there and pulling in these leads um, hop on a call um, and then you can decide from there if you want to work with the client too like I've got a few uh, partnerships like that like I hopped on uh, I won't go into the whole story because I don't want to give too much away but I hopped on the call I think it was last week or the week before um, to see if you know, we wanted to work with him and he got all but hurt, you know, about something that he, he said, Oh, well, can I see one of these sites? I was like, yeah, here's one. Uh, and then started pointing out every little fucking thing wrong with it that he thought 
it wasn't a complete sight, but you know, he, he was pointing out, well, this isn't, you know, who's this for? Blah blah. I'm gonna hunt them down. I'm gonna, you know. So I, I, I was like, oh shit. So it's a tracking number on it. So I went to the tracking number, redirected it to where it just went direct to voicemail because I was afraid he was gonna call and try and fuck some other stuff up. Um, and sure enough, he did call, left his name and number on on the number as soon as we got off the call. I was like, there is no way in fuck. I am uh, working with this person, but then you know, hopped on one yesterday, and it went really well. Um, it was in a, a niche that I had experience in, and you know, I'm like, yeah, we could, we could do something with this person, um, and you know, blow it out of the water for them. But once you once you rewire yourself to to liking the client, a lot of um, a lot of agency owners, including myself, a lot of times come up with disdain for their their uh, said clients, uh, but if you can rewire yourself to care for them and want to provide massive value for them, then they're going to be happier. They're going to provide you with more references, um, and you're going to ultimately do want to do better for them, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, also, you've got an option there if you're just the type of guy like me, or, or maybe even Brad, who is maybe potentially quite volatile and just can't be asked with people in general get someone to do that shit for you, you know, yeah. get an account manager or, or, you know, give someone, you know, a percentage or, or whatever, you know, I've got a guy that uh, deals with all of that shit for me so that I don't actually have to talk to people because I'm just, just can't be fucked. Um, yeah. Not my thing. So, yeah. And as Glenn Ingram says, identify pain in the ass people and just run from them. That's, yep. that's what I did from this guy last uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, it was, it, he was, I would equate him to um, one of the extreme white hat people, you know, like extreme, extreme, probably no one on here, but like this, this guy's paying for links and, and he's outranking, you know, uh, like, what do I do to take down this site? I was like, why don't you just pay for links, you know, as <laughs> I, 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 well, that's not fair. You know, he's not supposed to be doing that. That's against terms of service. You know, uh, you just leave people like that, like Glenn said. It's uh, yeah, fuck that. There's, you've just got to be able to say no to certain types of clients. Otherwise, it's hard when there's money in front of you too, and you, you want slash need it. It's hard. Sometimes you just got to put up with some some people. Sometimes too. But <laughs> yeah. If you if you need the money or want, if you've already got the money spit in your head, that's where you get in trouble. You know. It's uh, yeah, can be hard. But back to the PPL networks. Randy is asking. What sort of places would you look? Um, um, these kind of things. I mean, you could always go back to Flippa, look for stuff like that. Um, but then you would probably still need the GMBs. Empire Flippers is a pretty big, uh, pretty big network, but they make their people go through so much crap that they do demand a uh, um, a higher premium for it. Um, other than that, I would go out to people that are doing uh, PPL type stuff and. You know, start asking around is what I would do. Typically, your best resource is going to be someone that you just meet through networking, um, unfortunately and fortunately. So it's yeah, it's, it's it's not easy to go and unravel the Jordan Pierces of this world, for example. Um, you know, out of the whole world, um, you know, the, in Facebook groups or whatever Jordan decides to hang out um, to talk about these things. But look for someone who is into or talks regularly about that type of work mm -hmm. that and a lot of those people um they're like you and i where you know they can pop up uh out of the underground for a little bit you know converse with people you know uh, put out a ton of value and then they're like well i need a break so um yeah and then they they burrow back down and they disappear you know so have a network of people to build networks for you is what i would do always be on the lookout um, and Jordan's also saying there's lead gen Facebook groups that sell networks as well. So have a look in there. Um, but yeah, just join every single, you know, lead, like type in lead gen on, um, or lead generation on the Facebook search thing and join as many of those groups as you can. And just talk to people. Yeah, spend, yeah. Uh, I've, I've had to spend hours and hours and hours building up my network. So, um, mm -hmm. Of, of different stuff. It's the same with finding a link builder or a good logo guy. There's sure there's a million logo guys out there. I want a good one. I want the best one at the best price. So yep. just to get your hands dirty. Um, yep. Same thing with offers too. You know, where do I find good offers? You start looking. What 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 kind of offer are you looking for? You know, you just got to look. You know. 
year. Um, so Gordon Carslaw, the example of the woman who wanted to leave the agency, how many hours a week was she spending the websites? Also, who else did she need to help her on top of my help? Um, so Gordon, this woman um, spent her night times building this stuff up. Um, you know, you could you could beast through an affiliate website fairly quickly. You know, she doesn't have a hundred articles or anything like that in her website. She still earns decent money. Um, she came to me basically for um, kind of mentorship, and and obviously my job was to slap all of the not slap by the way. I didn't actually have. Her. <laughs> I can't say that when dealing with women, Craig. Yeah, um, but basically to to squeeze all of that agency bum fluff out of her. You know, she was, you know, just talking, talking, talking and wasn't taking action. So it was more of a kind of um, twist in her mindset, showing her that it can work. Um, basically, I gave her a shopping list. I said, like, if you want this, go here. If you want that, go buy it there. And that's what I can do for people, you know. And, and But I think a lot of it, she needed to kick up the ass, and, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying that. But being in an agency, it was all... Oh, oh good. everyone needs to kick in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I do too. Yeah, I'm like, three weeks later, what have you done to your website? Oh, I've, I've just spent time looking around at other people and, and mm -hmm. doing more research. And I'm like, what What have you actually done? So we kind of had some hard conversations as well, where I'm just like, you are going to you're going to end up in that agency for the rest of your life unless your finger comes out your ass. So basically, <coughs> um, I gave her a shopping list. Um, she didn't need anyone else's help. Um, she, she was able to get that kind of consultancy or whatever you want to call it, mentorship. I watched her going through it. She then bounced questions off of me saying, right, I've done this. What do I do now? And that's it. It's, it's as simple as that. It's not that hard. Um, could she have spent more time in the evening doing it? She probably could have. Could she have done it quicker than the nine months that it uh, took her to get there? Yes, she could have. She probably spent three months arguing with herself or coming back to me saying, oh, Craig, Semrush says this amount of search comes for this keyword and Ahref says that. You know, why Why do they all say different things? And all of these stupid questions, you're just like... That's how we came up with NFG, no fucks given. Paralysis, just, or, yeah, paralysis by analysis, you know. Yeah. Um, what a lot of people do. And you're just like, stop, stop giving a fuck. Yeah, just don't fucking ask too many questions. Just fucking go and do some work. Yeah. Um, How you learn? And I'm, I, you know, maybe it's a Scottish thing or, or, or you know, a, a, just a, a normal guy or whatever, but that works very well when you've got someone who's doing that. And I'm just saying, listen, you have to stop it. And I'm very blunt with her, saying, fuck you, do this, do that. So, she needed pushed and shoved around a bit um, to to get her into shape, but it's amazing to see the success. So I'm sure she appreciates it too, right? Yeah, she she understands now why I was probably a dick at the time. Um, so yeah, and Theo um, is a chap that he also knows me uh, and comes to me for advice, and uh, he'll tell you I won't hold back um, when you know i'm telling you what you need to do and if you're not doing it then you'll be told about it but theo's asking what kind of vetting process do you follow when analyzing someone selling their website privately not through um you know like odys or or empire flippers or whatever so what sort of things are you looking for brad i mean you got to make sure everything lines up you got to look at their analytics if they have it you got to look at their their call uh volume um, call analytics. Um, hopefully they have that something like call rail or similar. Um, and then just revenue coming in, they, they've got to provide that. Um, and I would go back as far as you can. Um, it's just, <clears throat> that's what I would go through. Make sure everything lines up, makes sense. And it's not just all BS, you know, cause I bought some turds off of Flippo back when I was first getting started, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, just make sure it lines up and make sure there's room for improvement most of the time as well, you know. Yeah, um, that's what you're looking for. It's a weakness. Just identify something that, that has that scope to to scale the shit out of. But also just make sure that some shady bastard's not done DR manipulation or talking shit. There's a lot of hooky people out there who make things you know, seem better than they actually are. And so I, I'm always looking for... You know, if you could check up on the person selling it too somehow, you know, in groups, I'm sure, you know, uh, if, if they're reputable, people have heard 
heard of them, you know, like, like if someone were buying something for me, you could go ask how many people, you know, um, who's heard of, you know, Brad Mabry, you know, do you trust him? Do you this? And a lot of people might come back and be like, he's a complete shit, you know, don't buy anything from him, you know? And then I probably would skip buying anything for myself. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, check up on the person. If they're active in various groups and stuff like that, and you trust the groups, um, then it, that would be, you know, a green check. But if they're nowhere else to be found and they just popped up because you asked, you know, who's selling this or that, um, and, and that's all they posted, then it would make me nervous. Yeah, no, definitely don't give money to to a new a new person in Facebook or whatever. Um, and don't do it friends and family if you don't trust them either. At least in PayPal, you can kind of refute it um but yeah I've, I've actually had that before um and i'm and this wasn't that long ago actually brad um where i paid for something uh, and you you never believe what this was right mm. i'll tell you the story fuck it i don't mind embarrassing myself people say what a dick so it's actually when we were coming over uh, to america last year mm -hmm. and uh me and, and gary wilson were like Let's buy some fake dollars and fucking throw them about and all that when we walk yeah. in there and burn them and just wind people up. So <laughs> I'm looking for fake, real-looking US dollars. So found this guy uh, online, and he said, yeah, transfer the money, blah, blah. Hey, do this, do that. I can send you this shit. And he had photographs and everything, and it looked good. And we were just going to come over and fucking have a big pile of money on the table just yeah. for banter's sake. And, and uh, the guy took my money. He said, can you send it friends and fa uh, family? I had this, this guy built up a fucking conversation, a rapport with me over a couple of days. And he sent the money. And literally after sent the money, he sent me a WhatsApp saying, fuck you, you've been had. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. yeah. What the fuck? Uh, and I was I always <laughs> get abuse, But uh, <laughs> yeah, I basically, get, everyone gets fucked over. But do never, ever, ever, Unless you know that person, like obviously yeah. Brad. If Brad said send it friends and family, um, I've met Brad, but obviously he's trusted within the industry. There's certain, you know, yeah. things you can take a risk on. But there's... I've got some vendors that I do friends and family now because I trust them enough to where they're going to want my. I'm a repeat customer, so they're going to want my continued business. So why would they fuck me on this? One, you know. Yeah. Um, but the first time I'm, I'm sending it, you know, you know, uh, normal. You know, yeah. I'm paying for goods and services for sure. Yeah, I even pay more to do it that way if they throw a bit. Chris Palmer is laughing, um, but Glenn Ingram is saying there's a great resource to sell, um, such as escrow.com, where they will yes. hold for you. Um, and you, there's obviously come back on that if someone tries to rob you blind. Um, so Adrian Borg is also saying looking at sites gets you SEO chatter. Working on a site might get them ranking. You are right. Now, we are nearly out of time, but we do have a final question here from Chuck Finley. Um, what What is the best? Is, is there any courses on cloaking or who's the best? Person? I mean, we've got some older material out there, um, but it's not really being sold at the moment. So maybe Mike and I need to to kind of work on something like that uh, because we've been, since we've been coming on here, we've been getting a lot more requests for some of the blacker hat stuff, um, which I don't mind, you know, uh, putting in a course as long as I, I put it out there and say, you know, this is just for informational purposes only, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe Mike, you and I, or someone um, all need to, uh, to talk about it at some time and put, put some resources together. What you can do, Brad, is, I rank very well, um, especially in the UK, for black hat SEO deals. Maybe you could launch one for Black Friday, um, which is about... Black Friday and Black Hat. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, but no, I can get a shit ton of traffic to it. But I think it's great to sell a course on Black Friday because I think there's a lot of guys out there who just buy shit up at that point. Yeah. Um, so it might be a good shout. If you Even if you're not using the Black Hat stuff, it's cool to know because um, all of... Or not all, but most innovations within SEO start at the black hat level, in my opinion. Um, Mike and I have a, a good friend that was doing, I think, like 300K a month in payday, you know, back in the day. Um, he may have been doing more, but I may be under quoting him there. But I know one network of sites was making 300K that Charles Float shared at some point, apparently, um, said it was his, and then it got shut down. So he lost 300K a month. And, and, uh, but he was 
complete black hat. It was the ex rummer days where you know, um, who, whoever had the most um, the most links at the time won. So he was his goal every day was scraping. You know, how can I scrape more links and you know get all these going towards my site? But yeah, that was uh, yeah. Uh, but it all innovation, in my opinion, starts uh, at the black hat level, probably eighty to ninety percent of the time. Um, Chuck, I will try and push the guys on trying to, to get a course on cloaking out, get some of their, their courses and, and get them freshened up and try and get something done for Black Friday. Can't promise anything, but I will harass the guys because it will certainly be good um, to for, for the general people to, to understand more about cloaking. A lot of people don't talk about it, but be interested to see what you guys have got on it. Digital Ear, thanks for the info. Great show, guys. No problem, Clint. Hope all is good. And one last thing, Brad. Um, <laughs> Chris Palmer, how much of how much percentage of your processes is black hat? Um, as far as cloaking and stuff, not as much as it used to be, but um, it, it depends on what you consider black hat. You know, do you do you consider, you know, uh lead gen gmbs to be black hat if so then a huge percentage but you know i've still got the traffic sites out there uh that cloak over so um typically when you get into cloaking and stuff like that that's when you would uh in my opinion cross over to the black hat realm um i know mike does do a lot more black hat type stuff like um spoofing traffic and stuff like that that we probably shouldn't get into without him on here uh to hold me back but um but yeah, he does um, a lot more for than me uh, from a general ranking perspective. Where I like to use it is um, you build the sites and then you cloak it over. You you build a site that Google loves and then you cloak it over um, to a site that uh you know is going to actually convert. Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, the, the argument here is, and, I, and it's one that I actually hate is being tarred with this black hat thing because I think for most of us including you, Brad, what we're trying to do is do the right stuff and the stuff that actually works. And yeah. a lot of it's not like nasty or cheating or cloaking or, or anything like I'm not, that. I'm not hacking into anything, anyone's sites. That would be the, I mean, uh, the ultra black hat type person, you know, a melting server, stuff like that. But yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I would consider myself to be a pretty white hat, if I'm being honest, but... Hey ho. But sadly, guys, we are out of time now. But thank you very much. We will be back next week. And hopefully, uh, Mike has got over his man flu. And Mr. Alex Mags Wellings will be the guest next week, um, providing all is well with Mike. But in the meantime, thank you very much, everyone. I uh, appreciate it. Do give the channel a little subscribe and like the video if you don't mind. And Brad, thank you for jumping on. Thanks, man. It was fun. A lot of great questions. Cool, man. Take it easy, guys.